Okay, I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in that Seinfeld episode. <laughs> Time to watch the best movie ever. Digging this music. It already sounds like Richard Band. Back when he was like trying. Just look at his CGI. Alright, so John Carl Beekler. I mean, so far it opens like Troll 2. There you go, Richard Band. Yeah, it does feel a lot more like Troll 2 than, uh, than you would think, considering Troll 2 doesn't have anything to do with this. I mean, every time I eat a salad. I always think like I'm going to start melting into green goo. It was about to turn into the Puppet Master music there, because Richard Band can only do like one thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Michael Moriarty. I saw a rat burger joining around the corner. Oh, neat. Gross. I wish you wouldn't call them rat burgers in front of the kids. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, already, like, you can tell, like, what this movie's going to be like. Keep an eye on your sister. Yeah, I'd rather watch Star Trek. What? Me too. <laughs> What a jerk. Yeah, so I hate the kids in this movie. Maybe he was talking about Deep Space Nine. Like the way he said it like that. <laughs> Peace Forge hot. Peace Forge cold. Peace Forge in the pot. Nine days old. Do the kids still say that? No. I've never even heard that before, so. You've never heard Peace Porch Hot? No. Are you kidding? I wasn't around back in like 1855 or whatever. No, it's still a common song. Pretty sure they, they do Kesha stuff now, not that, but okay. <laughs> yeah, right along with like Moon River and other songs from like the 1930s. <laughs> See, you didn't get that joke because yeah, you don't, I, I you don't, don't even know that song. Porridge hot, peas, porridge cold. Obviously they didn't cast her for her singing. <laughs> Wait, she already got taken by a troll? Yeah. It's like two minutes into the movie. Yeah, John Carl Beekler doesn't mess around. I mean, that's not bad. Except for those feet. I mean, I would have heard like the Wendy Ann, don't fool around. Wendy Ann? Yeah. See, I hate this kid. Look, like he, he walks with his arms out to the sides, like he's like, oh, I'm ready for like. Yeah, whatever. he worked out for this movie. They probably had to keep, like, keep telling him, like, stop flexing. I mean, look at him. Yeah, his arms are like, they look like, he looks like an action figure toy. Mom and Dad are going to be really pissed at you when they find out you've been hiding. They're going to be pissed you've been hiding. What year was this? Uh, like 87 maybe? I mean, we usually just call that the year of Transformers. If you want to be pessimistic about it. I mean, right now it's like, hang on, think, it's like 32 AT. <laughs> You're going to have to cut out that huge gap of the time it took me to do math. <laughs> I mean, they didn't even touch that guy. Yeah. He's getting ready for the NBA, so when someone brushes into him, you'll be like, oh, oh, God! Harry <laughs> Jr. So, yeah, we haven't mentioned that uh, the main characters in this movie are called Harry Potter. Michael Moriarty as Harry Potter. Oh, yeah, this guy. Church is my battleground now. <laughs> Sweaty palms. There's Sweaty the palms. palms. Sweaty palms. Sweaty palms. Gosh, let me, uh, that's a sweaty palm. That's Ooh. two sweaty palms. Let me feel you. Ah, that's another sweaty palm. Yes, sir, hello, sweaty palm. Owned and operated by liberal scum. They knock our president every chance they get. Well, I, I don't, don't like, this, like I like this guy. <laughs> There's your Seinfeld tie-ins. Who set off the goddamn fire alarm? So June Lockhart was the mom in Lost in Space. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's like weird seeing her so like aggressive and mean in this movie. Like, swearing and she was stuff. tired of being typecast. Seventy years ago, I was cast as like the nice person. It's time to like put an end to that. Troll is the movie that's gonna change my career one way or the other. I mean, I would react a little more intensely than that if someone just bit me. All right, so canonically, Godzilla bit Harry Potter at one point. Yeah, it's the next movie I think that they're gonna do. I mean, like Jeff Rowling will be like, Godzilla was gay the whole time. <laughs> Wait, they just moved in. They already have her room all like pink yeah, and everything. That's impressive. It's kind of like Stan Lee there. I, I think you're right. Girl, jump it up, baby. Oh, she got him with that.
I mean, what the hell's wrong with that? That doesn't even look like milk. Are you all right? It's Milbog milk. Special milk. High in vitamin content. Ah. Hey, kids, what's going on in there? Oh, I just tripped. <laughs> Not like, hey, Harry Potter Sr., you should come, like, check this out because your daughter just threw me across a room. Yeah, this music is really impressive for Richard Band. Okay, so she's possessed by a troll. No, she is a troll. Well, whatever. Well, like, what is the troll's wrong? goal? Wait, say again? What is the troll's goal? I don't want to say it again because it rhymed. <laughs> what is the troll's goal? You gotta pay the troll toll if you want to get into that boy's hole. His lights are sound activated. <laughs> that's cool. I don't, I, I don't know if I would say that's cool. <laughs> I like his place. I would totally take a place like that. <laughs> I mean, Georgie Lucas really let himself go. That's not where it's stuck in, but okay. Now he really looks like Stanley. I mean, that looks like Troll 2 to me. Yeah, Green it does. stuff coming out. Effects are a lot better than Troll 2. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude, he's got an arcade cabinet in his freaking apartment. So he lures the woman, the woman in there. I mean, that's pretty impressive that they went, like, did that much. Mm hmm Like a freaking Contra boss. So that's a very John Carl Beekler thing, having like the little puppet monsters be like just moving all the time, making weird noises, like their faces are all contorting and stuff. Are you sure he didn't work on Super Mario Brothers, the movie? Those freaking Goombas? Well, what do you want, short stuff? <laughs> can I come in? I think I'm gonna throw up. Well, how can I resist an offer like that? <laughs> Go on, the on the right. Maybe that's Wait, just his that? pickup line for like old women. I mean, they sound like the Goombas from Mario Brothers. Yeah. I mean, the trolls are supposed to be like the bad guys or whatever, but like whenever the music happens, it's like nice, happy music. I mean, I think that's a shortcoming in like Richard Band's capabilities. Not bad, eh? Wait, what? <laughs> Yeah, that totally disguises it. Well, did you pop your cookies? Do people say it like that? No. I feel safe here. You're sounding like a ninny. What the hell have you got to be afraid of? <laughs> well, I like her. Is all this stuff yours? Of course it is. I live here, don't I? Oh, yeah. An idiot. <laughs> That's John Carl Beekler on the painting in the back. Oh, I was going to say it looks like Kelsey Grammer. I don't have any friends here. So I thought I'd go to the 75-year-old lady. I'm really scared. <laughs> yeah, we can tell by your emoting. God, such a good actor. I mean, like, obviously June Lockhart is a better actor than the rest of them, but, like, it feels like maybe she wrote, rewrote her own lines because she also seems like the only intelligent character in the movie. Yeah. Hey, it's that one guy. I tell him what movie it is. It's uh, Siegfried and the Dragon, I think is what it's called. But they wouldn't be showing that on TV. They got that because it's like public domain, probably. Yeah. Plus, like, it's a silent movie, but they, they added in, like, sound effects for this movie. Yeah, because what's his face? Weekler? It's like, I like to have things rolling around making noise. I think I'd rather stay here and play. Okay. I mean, what is with these parents? I know. Like, look at how happy she is. But she also seems to, like, not know her own children. Yeah, she seems like just a huge idiot. See that painting? It's from the Dark Tower. Like they're getting kind of like a Moriarty tie in there. Mm. It's in that bowl. The stuff. It's all a shared universe. Ooh. <laughs> oh, man. That's how I'm gonna come out of a room. Weird kid. Yes, says yeah. that guy. <laughs> <laughs> this freaking snakeskin wallpaper. <laughs> Just like Control Two, there's a completely unnecessary like dance number. Good. At least it's Michael Moriarty this time. It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, I doubt that was in the script. Like, that's probably just... They're like, oh man, I'm glad I had this camera run. <laughs> I mean, what? It's going on a really long time, too. Yeah. It's probably how they got him to sign on for the movie. They were like, you're gonna get an extended dance number. 
Hey, where are his teeth? Is that even a full size pool table? I mean, I know this is happening right now, but that's what I'm concerned about. So I think the bullet was supposed to have passed through and hit that thing, but yeah. that angle doesn't make any sense. <laughs> well, I honestly hope that he's dead. <laughs> Why are you staring at me like that? Because you're a f***ing weirdo, daddy. I mean, I still don't get what this troll is after. Yeah. <laughs> that's pretty gross. I'll check out that Parasite poster. Oh Dungeon yeah. Master. Oh, that's another uh, Charles Band movie. No. His room's all pink, too. Is that a surprise? <laughs> why, you, why is he not wearing a shirt? Right. Like, that was probably his contract. It's like, I gotta show off my guns. Yeah, he's like, I worked out so much for this role. Okay, so she met, a, like, a stranger out on the street and invited him in for dinner, and they're just like, okay. Yeah, like, cool. Like, you're seven or however old she is. I mean, she's older than seven, but... And on his part, like, you don't know these people. Like, if a little girl invites you into her house. Also, this is, like, a pretty huge apartment. Yeah, I didn't see him getting all that huge furniture in here either, if any movers or anything. I brought a uh, note from my mother. That's very good. <laughs> <laughs> these people are assholes. Like, I hope, like, wow. nobody of a different race is in this movie. They'll be like, oh, what? what's wrong with you? You mean? Yes, our dog. Is a pod person from the planet Mars. I think that might be Charles Band. I always wanted to run away with a circus when I was a kid. Yeah, Michael Moriarty would have done really well with circus. He would be like, look at the dancing freak. And I'm going to say that again because I feel uncomfortable saying the word freak. Michael Moriarty could join the circus go into the dancing fool. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they all know the song? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Is this a freaking Danny Elfman like score? <laughs> I mean, he's he always has creatures that like one one half of their mouth opens more than the other one. <laughs> I mean, like, some of them are singing, but some of them are just like, blah, 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 blah. Man, as a kid, I would have loved this movie. Look at those things on the walls. Freaking Rodan. Yeah, she covered up the mushroom, but she didn't cover up Rodan. I wonder if John Carl Beekler was like, make me look as creepy as possible in the painting. I mean, it's a, such a wide variety, too. Yeah. Cool. yeah. I mean, I'm sure the fact that he directed this movie, he was like, I'm just going to throw in whatever I can. Man, she got like a strong arm for sure, man. You mean? Yes. <laughs> Your canary is a pod person from the planet Mars. Wait, Sam. Just like in Troll 2 when the kid won't eat the food or whatever. Oh. Yeah, but she didn't piss on the table. Not yet. I must do it! Anyways, I promised Miss St. Clair I'd eat with her. Are you all right? Yeah, I'm fine. You sure? Yeah. Well, he was asking because you offered to eat lunch with like an 80-year-old woman. I like how the note on the fridge says haircuts for Harry's. He doesn't need a haircut, he's barely got any hair in there. He needs dance lessons. Acting lessons. Hi, Eunice. Hello. Freaking weirdo. I know. How'd you know it was me? Oh, I recognize the knock. It's pre-pubescent. <laughs> uh... Fell in love with a handsome young wizard named Torok. And since we were going to be married... She said Torok? You wish she said Turok. I think she said Turok. No, she said like Horgoth or something. She said Turok. I am Turok. It's like she's a pod person from the planet Mars. <laughs> Close. But no cigar. Yeah, I mean, they're freaking laughing about, like, my sister's a freaking imposter or whatever. Okay, I'm a little confused. <laughs> <laughs> Just like in that Seinfeld episode. Mm -hmm. Do you know what day Friday was? Uh, Star Trek weekend on Channel 11. I thought he said he didn't like Star Trek. No, no he said I'd rather be watching Yeah, Star but he said it like sarcastically. Oh, I think that's uh, his acting that you can blame for that. Make up your mind, Harry Potter Jr. Your sister isn't an alien. She's something much worse. What is she? 
Well, we don't have time to chat about that now. We call them conservatives. <laughs> now go on, shoot. I mean, she says we don't have time, but they're just like ambling around and like, yep, you know, eating pancakes and shit, playing trumpets. Well, I mean, this is like, at least this is way better than the actual Harry Potter books. Maybe if the Harry Potter movies were like this, I'd watch them. Uh, is that creepy dude? No, uh, that's her her husband. Yeah, the guy looks weird. Uh, well, yeah, well that describes like everybody in this movie. <laughs> feels like an episode of Star Trek. I bet her damned as she tries to forget about this movie. I mean, what is supposed to be happening? I like, don't know. Doctors talking to my parents about recessive genes. I thought they were talking about pants. It's funny what you think about when you're a child. This movie's all over the place. Yeah. That guy's also like a way better actor than everybody else in this movie. Yeah. Yes. Miss Cooper! Are you in here? <laughs> yeah, maybe if you hadn't like eaten all those pancakes with the dumbass kid. I mean, she knows about this kind of stuff and she waits until the entire apartment is taken over to like do anything. Even when she like played the trumpet, she could have taken action instead of being yeah. like, that'll show them. Yeah. Like, Why I can play she... the trumpet. <laughs> Do you know what day it was when they dropped the bomb on Hiroshima? <laughs> what is that? Well, well okay. waiting for Wendy. Why? Because it's my job to watch her. Yeah, you're doing such a good job, kid. Honey! Did you do a lot of drugs before we met? <laughs> I mean, he is a good part of this movie, but he just doesn't seem to fit with the rest of the movie. Nothing fits with this movie. Like, it's, it's all like a bunch I of... I don't know what's going on there. Yeah, I don't want to. Oh, so, like, now the troll's like a good guy. Like, because he's uh -oh. helping him out. I like how they put, like, the snot coming out of yeah. his nose. This movie's so in-depth. Like, I don't know, like... He's got so many layers, the troll. I mean, not that kid. That kid's like less than one dimensional. I imagine this video is going to end up being a lot shorter than the Jason one. God, this movie has a little bit of merit. Damn it. Check out those effects. Oh man, how did they do that? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Noah Hathaway is from the Never Ending Story. The, the guy oh, I can see it now, yeah. yeah. I mean, it seems like his acting got worse. How did you know I was coming? Well, you told your parents you were coming over from- You already know she's a witch, man. I know. She's got freaking talking mushrooms. She reads out the giant spell books. He still wants to rule the world with his army, and that's why he's here. Pff, he can't even take over one apartment Stop. building. I think that he's going from apartment to apartment. Yeah, so it should only take him like 7,000 years to take over the world. See ya. What a weirdo. Yeah. Why don't you pick up a sword? Why don't you do something? I mean, she knows about all this crap. Yeah, She's I like, know. hey, dumb kid, like, go and, like, take care of it. So that's her daughter? Yeah. She's not as hot as her mom was when she was younger. She was in She-Wolf of London back in, like, the 30s. She was pretty hot back then. I assumed the form of a wolf. She was pretty hot in Lost in Space, too. Waiting. Or what? A stray dragon? Oh. Oh, that's... I can't tell if he's like the worst dad or the best dad. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell how he ever became a dad. What do you call him? call That's all I gotta say. I like how the wind is blowing like one plant. <laughs> Alright, Torok, show yourself! Well, she's not as good as your mom. I'm gonna try and use that phrase, like, oh, I feel like I'm gonna pop my cookie or whatever. Is that what she said? Is that what yeah, she said? Yeah. Yeah, why didn't you bring the trumpet thing? Or a sword. Try walking faster. <laughs> she did her own stunts. Blow the horn right now! If it's a fight you want, it's a fight you'll get. I mean, this dumb kid, he's got one expression. I guess he's got like smiling or like... No, weird awkward smile. Weird, awkward smile, and like, oh crap, what was my line? All right, kiddo, it's up to you now. Don't blow it. You and his no! <laughs> Go on. He sounded so, like, distraught. No! <laughs> Maybe, like, Edward Furlong saw this movie, and he was like, hey, I can be an actor, too. Mm -hmm. But I'm gonna make my voice crack way more all the time. No! I'm also gonna have a way dumber haircut and do way more drugs. I'm just kidding. Me and Ed are friends. Is he alive? <laughs> <laughs> what was that? 
Yeah, that sound is what like throws you off. Like everything in this movie. I mean, has been I, I like how when the time. trumpet went through the house, nobody was like, "What was that?" Oh. It makes me think of like Ghostbusters. Yeah. Shut that damn door. He can't take over if you keep him out of your home. Give them more information than that. Ow. Why would you even think to touch it with your hand first? Like, if anything, go pick up a rock or a stick or something. Yeah. Oh, man, it's freaking Ganon. <laughs> <laughs> Let me shield, like, my face. I mean, that one looks like... I I'm sure he put more effort into that one, because it's, like, yeah. the main one. But, that, like, that looks really good, from the face, at least. <laughs> Some of those people aren't reacting at all. They're just kind of looking like, at it. I mean, that's pretty good stop motion. <laughs> Wait, is that a rock or did he pick a piece of the ground out? Uh, okay, I guess it's a rock. Kind of. I mean, if this giant monster is throwing rocks at you, like, run. Ah, uh, I hope it just kills him. Like, oh man. No, no, not the girl! <laughs> Just like control two, the spears. So why did she say he would keep the girl? Needs one human specimen or something. I mean, I know it's just like an arbitrary like plot point. Well, speaking of arbitrary plot points, we're gonna have to discuss the whole plot of this movie because I'm. I'm Legit, a little bit confused about some characters' motivations. Yeah. I mean, I think most of it is just like, hey, let's do some cool, like, weird troll monsters. I like how the lights turn back on when they close it. That was cool. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they had, like, a more developed script. Couldn't cast, like, real actors, and they were like, well, let's just dumb it down and make it not make any sense. Or Michael Moriarty, like, kept eating the scripts or something. But, like, the other troll was the one who started the whole thing. I know. Well, that's what I want to talk about. Yeah. He's pretty good in there. For a human. No, he didn't. He got batted around and the troll did everything. Yeah, yeah he didn't actually do anything. Look at these cops. No one says, like, who are you? Where are you going? Like, what just happened? Yeah, I mean, like, they're literally, like, not saying anything. They're just standing there. Yeah, because it costs money. As soon as an extra talks, oh, they had to pay him 400 bucks right there. Okay, that's all. Show's over. <laughs> they didn't even investigate anything. Vine tentacles coming out of the top of the building must have been nothing. Let's play it safe. I'll check the side of the building out. Right. Check the side of the building out? I mean, I like how he also made his judgment from the outside of the building. He's like, the outside looks fine. Yeah, well, also, he said he was going to check out the side, but now he's like going up here to the freaking laundry room. Why would you open the door to the laundry room? Okay. I mean, for Richard Band, like, that's pretty freaking good. Yeah. Got Frank Welker in there. So the troll is still there. It implies that he's gonna just do it again. Yeah, okay, I so mean, let's talk about the character motivations. So, like, the troll was, like, trying to turn everyone else into, like, trolls and stuff. But then he, like, the troll, like, was, like, kind to the the little guy who's like, I have, like, cancer or whatever, I'm gonna die. And he's like, well, oh, well, if, like, if that's how you want to look at it, I mean, he still turned him into, like... I mean, he did it with, like, positive intentions. Maybe. You know? Maybe. All of his interactions with humans, like, was he just messing with them? Or, like, like what was the point of all that? I mean, I'm guessing it was just to pad out the movie, but, I mean, it doesn't make sense. All right, let's go look at IMDb. Yeah. Right. Let's check out what the people of the internet have to say about this movie. Yeah, because they're always really... Rational, level-headed, things like that. This is a pretty comedy slash horror movie. Like, <laughs> already, like, what does that mean? <laughs> the evil little character <laughs> troll. <laughs> oh, yeah, the so kids right. have personality as well, and they're not some stupid one-sided characters. That's, like, all we said for the whole movie. <laughs> Just wait till you see a guy turn into a bunch of plants. <laughs> Remember, it has nothing to do with the really crappy movie Troll 2. I mean, it's definitely a better movie than Troll 2. Yes. But, like... In terms of entertainment value, Troll 2 is way higher. 3 out of 10. Absolutely the funniest horror film ever, and they give it 3 out of 10. The movie has maybe a half a minute worth of scariness unless you are afraid of midgets. That's offensive wow. and untrue. 
June Lockhart's every scene she was in was terrifying. I mean, I like to throw in LOLs in my reviews yeah, too. What? This movie is good. Emoji, yeah, dot 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 hyphen different. Space comma space. <laughs> Interesting, sarcastic with a capital S. Like, I mean, I can't even <laughs> ten out of ten. Okay. <laughs> Alright, let's read it. <laughs> a must for all unions. Yes. You have to read it like a total snob. Tensions between the conscious and subconscious. Blah, blah, blah. The transformation of essential nature into one's magical essence. Proceeding very differently. Like, I'm, I'm like, I, I'm, I'm reading it like out loud and I already like lost it. This is absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, well, it all, also, it's just wrong. Because it says the balance is restored and the unknown recedes. Triggered by the unknown's eventual recognition of the value of human love. That is not the reason. No. The troll wanted the woman for the girl, like, just to have, or whatever, for whatever reason, but it wasn't because of the because of the kid. When Torak wipes out humanity, he will save one token specimen, a fair-haired maiden, and she will serve as the princess of the fairies. Oh, you didn't keep reading, though. The unknown recedes, but the door is still ajar, for it is the balance of the duality of the conscious and subconscious that is the basis of our existence. Oh, see, child stars who are yeah. actually bearable to watch. Okay, oh, automatic like crap. I'm really scared. I mean, sure, they're not cloyingly, cloyingly cute. That's definitely true. They're like the exact opposite. Dross. They use the word dross. If you like quality fantasy, then Troll is a must-see movie. I mean, the way their English is so, like, competent, though, like, this doesn't seem like a fake yeah review. it's like uh like an old professor who has never seen movies like this no this no, like no this sounds like someone who just took freaking psych 101 or that and was yeah. like oh let me like or philosophy like 100 and it was like let me just tell you about true when i first seen it in 1987 i really liked it i already knew that it was a fantasy and i was prepared <laughs> sorry i didn't realize you needed to like get yourself set to like watch a movie like that i disagree with the person who think this film is the worst movie ever. This film is nothing compared to that movie. I understand tenses and everything. Oh, jeez. I mean, these sentences, like, don't make sense, and they go on forever. It was impossible to find it in videos any longer. An irritating little girl who you just want to slap are the main <laughs> ingredients of this corny compost heap. Okay, all right. Shelly Heck is the bland mob, complete with lopsided haircut and plastered on expression of vague surprise. <laughs> That's good. I thought she was hot, too. I didn't want to say that in the video. But the mob was she not. was not. Yeah, she was. I like how it's redeemed by an incomprehensible premise <laughs> around a script. June Lockhart knew about the troll the whole time. Why'd she wait until now to do something about she it? She waited until the end of the movie. She already knew earlier in the movie, and she still didn't know. Now that she has decided to do something about it, what does she think a skinny, low-testosterone, 14-year-old <laughs> fantasy film reject is going to have to accomplish? <laughs> All right, I want to go find... Let's go look in the one-star reviews then. Yeah, I mean, none of these have really been that great. They've been semi-competent. <laughs> That's not why I come to IMDb. <laughs> I like how it's sort by helpfulness. <laughs> it's only seven people rated it one star. People's standards are too high nowadays. The actors could not have acted their way out of a room full of monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> Is that supposed to be harder or easier than a room that isn't full of monkeys? Like, I don't know what kind of a standard that is. <laughs> okay, I, I think what they mean... <laughs> I think what they mean... I'm, no, let's just move on. I'm not, I'm not even here. I don't care what they mean. Like... Okay. Scroll down. <laughs> scroll past it. Alright. Uh, I mean, this hurts. Like, jeez. Okay. Oh, Oh, man. Okay, next next review. I'm not sure if this counts as a spoiler, but at one point, Sonny Bono turns into some kind of plant or something. <laughs> like, barely professional. Barely, barely professional. professional. It's professional, but yeah, just barely. barely. Didn't the aliens come out in 86? Yes. So this came out the same year as that. Yeah. That's like night and day. Anyway, so Troll. The 1986 masterpiece that got snubbed for Best Picture. I mean, I can see why Troll 2 is the one that people know about. Oh my god! This feels like one that just kind of got thrown away and for justifiable reasons, too. Yeah, I mean, it is, it's an Empire movie, and they did, like, a lot of movies like that. Like, I mean, like the Ghoulies movies. Ghoulies 2. Ah! They'll get you in the end again. Like, you know, there were a ton of movies like that coming out in the wake of Gremlins. Would you call it a bad movie? I would call it, uh, indifferent. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good movie. I mean, it's got some cool effects. But even that, some of the effects are like just kind of goofy. Like, he's throwing a puppet troll here. 
which I'm like, all for that. But <clears> the, <throat> I mean, the people making it understand how to make a movie, but it's just not a good one. I couldn't figure out what the tone of the movie was supposed to be. Yeah, well, again, like John Carl Beekler, in his effects, you kind of get his sense of humor a lot in the way he, like, designs his creatures and the way they act and stuff, and even, like, the sound effects they make. Right, but, like, then make a make it a comedy-ish movie. Yeah, but, like, well, there were points where it was, like, felt like it was supposed to be very heartfelt, and then other points where it was supposed to be, like, scary. Yeah, like the scene where the scene where he's like talking about uh, his his that he's gonna die. You're gonna die? Looks that way. It's like a real like serious and it went on for well quite acted a bit. scene. Yeah, yeah. but uh, like pretty much every scene exploring a character in this movie it doesn't mean anything because the characters are just gonna get turned into like trolls or plants or whatever. And then, like, never show up again. And the family... I mean, if anybody... Like, they were the weirdest characters yeah, out of anybody. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you had, if at the end the twist was that, oh, they're actually, like, some other kind of magical beings or whatever, and they're, like, going to fight the trolls, like, I would have been like, okay, that's not really a surprise. No, see, they could have done They could have said, because they had all the pot people from Mars, they could have been like, let's go back to Mars. Yeah, that would have been... I was going to say a good twist. I don't know if that would have been a good <laughs> twist. It would have explained some things, that's for sure. I mean, the fact that, like, the parents didn't notice anything weird about their daughter. But, again, like, okay, so she was the troll. Why was she there? Why is she still hanging out with the family? Like, yeah. what is she doing? She she goes from apartment to apartment, like, turning people into, like, plants or whatever. But she, like, does it to one. And then she goes back to hang out with the family for a little bit, for no reason. And then goes and introduces herself first. Like, what for? At the end of the movie, like, I know the cop fell into, like, the whatever. But... No one's going to come looking for the other people that lived in that apartment that are now dead and gone. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like, they all have families. They all have friends. They all have, like... Well, they were all so weird. Maybe nobody, like, nobody would ever want to, like, find them again. They're probably like, I'm glad they disappeared. You're kind of, like, expected to just say, like, oh, it's magic. So I guess, like, you know, explanations don't matter. It's like any typical Harry Potter story. It's like it doesn't need to have, like, <laughs> depth to it. <laughs> Or explanations for how anything works. It's just like, oh, you know, the paintings move. Like, whatever. Just like they did in this movie. And Michael Moriarty is amazing. Yes. His skills and talents as being like a total weirdo <laughs> were like wasted on this movie. He showed up too infrequently for us to fully appreciate how weird he is. He's, he's better when he's played off against actual actors where, where everybody else isn't like a weirdo or acting like he's normal. Right. Like where they act more like, like real people. The person we had to stick with the most in this movie was the freaking terrible acting kid. Yeah. Mr. Neverending Story. A Never Ending Story is a movie that people people like because they saw it when they were kids. Right. And they're like, oh, that movie was so good. But if you go and watch it now, it's like not no, good. No, not at Again, all. like you've got some awesome effects in there, but like it's not a good movie. But I'm pretty sure the kid was better in that movie than he was in this movie. Yeah. I can't imagine that he was like that bad. I mean, this movie... It's pretty much exactly what you described. Like, if you watched it as a kid, you were like, yeah, but if you watch it now, you're like, yeah. Well, I did watch it as a, as a kid, and, and, like, yeah, this movie sucked. Like, I, I you know, I'm not going to be like, oh, it was good, because, like, I saw it when I was, like... Did you like it when you were you a kid? Know, like, nine. Yeah, I thought it was awesome. I mean, it was, like, the apartment's getting taken over, like, the plants, like, growing out. I mean, as a kid, like, you, you don't question some of the, like, plot holes and stuff. You don't even notice them. And you, like, fill in other blanks where, like, your mind is just imagining what's happening. Like, the plants growing everywhere. I was, like, imagining that all the, you know, that it's, like, just spreading all over the place. But you actually watch the movie and it's, like, it doesn't make any sense. I like to think that June Lockhart talked to all the cast and crew the way she did at the beginning of this movie. For, for being what it is, the fact that they had June Lockhart, they had, uh, whatever that professor guy's name was, like, he's a good actor. Mm -hmm. He stands out not because he's like short or whatever like he I, like I've seen him in other movies and stuff and like he's a good actor Well, let's talk about the effects. It was clearly just John John Carl Beekler like let me like make as many like weird little puppet creatures and stick them in there or wherever So um, did he start as an effects guy? Yeah, he's primarily an effects guy Usually you see like a special effects person like there'll be like a movie and it'll have cool special effects and it'll be like a decent movie and then, like, the sequel, it's like, oh, it's directed by the guy who did the special effects in the first one. But he um, went on to do more than just the one movie? Yeah, I mean, he did, like, he did uh, Friday the 13th Part 7. He knows what he's doing. It's just that, like, a lot of times I feel like his sense of humor overrides everything, and he's just like, let's just have fun with it. As opposed to, like, is it actually going to be a good movie when it, when it comes out? Uh, Ghoulies 3... Like, he directed that one. Oh, and, God. like, yeah, you could just see, like, he's just like, dude, it's going to be so goofy and whatever, and we're just going to have fun and whatever. And it's like, yeah, but you got to have, like, a movie that's fun for other people that are watching it after it's already done. Let's talk about the the little girl. 
Let's not talk about the little girl. All right, let's move on. Let's talk about, um, like, when they moved in first, and then all the uh, characters were, like, introducing themselves. These are the character types, and this is how, like, wacky they are, and they're all, like, one-dimensional, and they're, like, th this character's like this, and this character's like this, and they're going to be like that the whole time. Yeah, which... Like, the running guy, the marine guy, like, it was just so over the top. Yeah, but in a way where, like, it's not like it comes up later. Like, if they had done, like, the like the ironic thing you were talking about before, where, like, somebody will die based on, like, what they say, uh -huh. if they had, like, if each of them had been killed based on, you know, something that had to do with their character, then that would at least be something. But it was like, let's just make weird characters just for the sake of doing weird characters, and then they die and never, or I guess, get turned into monsters, and, like, never do anything again, and it doesn't matter. They introduced themselves as what seemed like, like, the first episode of a, te a bad like a, TV show. Yeah, like the Big Bang Theory or something like that. Next week on Seinfeld. Yeah, the the trolls are like back. Trolls. Like, <laughs> I mean, what a weird apartment, too. Like, people just, like, the fact that the kids just walked into all their apartments and they're like, oh, okay, like, yeah. they were, like, caught off guard a little bit, but the, none of them said, like, get out. Yeah, well, you know? it was a simpler time, too. Like, nowadays, you couldn't do that. You'd be like, oh, I don't want people to But even them, back like, then, I wouldn't want someone just walking into my house. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying it's normal. Especially if it's someone who, like, I just saw i didn't even meet i just saw yeah. them yesterday yeah well also like a little girl on the street inviting you over to dinner it's a little weird to just show up and be like hey i brought like whatever he brought like you know champagne or whatever like and then the 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 parents like reaction to him being like a little person yeah it's like what the hell like are we supposed to relate to these people or like what like in a way they're kind of supposed to be like the uh you know like in the kind of movies where it's only it's the one kid that knows what's happening and they're like and the bumbling like, parents that like yeah yeah are like oblivious to everything and the kid has to like you know keep it secret but somehow like take care of the problem but in this case like he takes care of the problem by just staring at his sister and being like i have to keep an eye on her or whatever and they can't even do that yeah and then freaking i mean uh, freaking june lockhart is the only one with any with any importance as a character and she waits until the end of the movie to do it but then she gets turned into a tree yeah so really so the character no no <laughs> here the character that solves the problem is a character who caused the problem in the first, in the first place. place. Yeah, yeah, that's the real like. And then at the end of the movie, movie, turns the cop into another like plant. The, the message is like, don't reach too far. You know, don't try to turn an entire apartment into like plants and monsters and whatever. I like, thought you were talking about in terms of like the movie, like don't reach too far. <laughs> like it could turn into trolls. Yeah. So really, the plot went totally circular and ended up nowhere. Yeah, but again, I mean, I don't think anybody anybody who worked on this movie was thinking, like, this is going to be anything deeper than a movie with, like, some trolls. Right. Which, in that sense, it, it's somewhat delivered. The problem is, like, the rest of the movie was so stupid, and those characters were so aggravating. That well, that's probably why Michael Moriarty that. was, like, all weird and stuff, because he was like, this movie's not going anywhere. They, they probably said, like, it doesn't matter. Like, if you want to be a freaking weirdo, if like... you just want to ad-lib all your weird. stuff, go for yeah. it. Yeah. That Ghostbusters scene, like, having a, a, a normal setting, and then you open up a door, and it's, like, a, to another dimension or right. whatever, it was, like, the exact same thing um, and this came out the same year i think as ghostbusters wasn't it or was that 84 that was 84 you're thinking of that cartoon the, the real, real ghostbusters. ghostbusters yeah what does that even mean um i think that was like a legal thing i just remember the one time as a kid when i when i bought like a vhs tape like used and i like put it in and someone had just like taped porn over it and i was like oh all right it's like <laughs> And then at the end, it went back to, like, the Ghostbusters episode. I was like, I don't understand the plot of this episode. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, Slimer really got hurt. <laughs> yeah, so I guess I was wrong when I said I don't like Harry Potter, because this movie was okay, at least. So, yeah, Troll is all right, but it's nothing special. Other than, like, the, the one singing scene. That was incredible. You know, I mean, I guess the dancing scene, you could, I would put that in a, in a compilation of Michael Moriarty. All right. That was a waste of time. I hope you subscribe. <laughs> Because you just wasted your f***ing time, too. I know you wanted me to stick that plug in there if I subscribe. I forgot. You also wanted me to remind you to get the cream for that growth that you have. 